It seems that at birth, most humans are incredibly optimistic. You know, when an adult asks a five-year-old what they want to be when they grow up, they all reply, an astronaut, a doctor, a dancer, a YouTuber. But it does beg the question, if we all start out as these dreamers, these go-getters, we have these amazing role models, at what point do we give up on those dreams? At what point do our dreams die? Do we just accept a life of mediocrity? Lately, I've been reading a lot of works about Stoicism and from Stoic philosophers, and the more I read, the more the philosophy makes sense. You know, initially I thought it was just kind of about suppressing your emotions and not reacting to bad situations. You know, I confused the philosophy of Stoicism with the character trait of being Stoic. But as I started to read more, it started to make a lot more sense. I think ultimately stoicism is about acceptance. It's the realization that there's no fair in life, that the things that happen outside of us, the things that happen outside of our control don't really care about us. They don't care if it's fair to us or not. It's about accepting that those things just happen to us. You know, where you were born, where you grew up, what school you went to, a lot of things are just random, you know, there's no f sense of fairness behind any of those things. And so, you know, whether it was good or bad, it's not fair. It's not fair to anybody. And so it's about accepting, first of all, that fact, but then going beyond that. And, you know, when bad things happen to us in life or really good things happen to us in life, you know, stoicism is just about how we react to those things. Do we get really sad or do we get really excited and feel like it's something we deserved or something like, you know, we've done all this hard work finally it's our time and if we feel those things you know i think that's ego it's not acceptance it's ego and the influence of ego in our lives and once i was able to realize that force the force of ego that gives us that sense of fairness of deserving the sense that we're more important than just the randomness of the external world I realized that's often what's standing in the way of our dream. I have a vivid memory from when I was about 13. I was just sitting at my desk, doing homework, looking out the window like I always did, and I had this sudden realization that one day I wouldn't be here anymore, at least not in you know this form. And that realization scared me. It was kind of the first time I thought about what would I be remembered for? How long would I be remembered? What would happen after I moved on from this world? And so then I started to think about, you know, famous people. I was like, well, famous people are written down in history books. They're remembered for a lot longer. Maybe the meaning of this life is to be remembered. <laughs> and, you know, so I thought about getting famous and I was like, maybe that would, maybe just the longer I'm remembered, the more meaningful my life would feel. And that was my first real brush with ego. You know, and looking back, and you'd see the way ego changed the course of my life in a lot of ways. Back starting when I was 10, I used to love to just make videos, even if no one would see them. I would make stop motion Lego animations, live action videos, playing my favorite characters, you know, with my brothers in the backyard. I would just make these videos, edit them together in Windows Movie Maker, and watch them back. You know, there was no expectation that anyone else would ever watch them. I just made it for the joy of making. And you know, I continued to make YouTube videos sporadically, but something changed along the way. You know, ego came into the picture. It started to not be enough to just watch these videos back myself. I felt like other people had to be watching them or like I needed to put them out there. And suddenly, you know, I felt like the videos I was creating weren't up to the standards of other people who I looked up to on YouTube or people with millions of subscribers. And then insecurity came into the picture and then I stopped creating pretty much altogether. And even when I was able to push through that initial wall of insecurity, my ego still stuck around. You know, every time I put out a video, I checked the analytics. I felt like if people were watching, that was a sign that my videos were good. And I would feel disappointed when they weren't doing well, you know, when they weren't getting views or comments. And when I got comments of praise, I reveled in that praise. My ego, you know, told me that I had a sense of importance through these videos that people should be watching or that I put a lot of work into it and that I kind of deserved some level of praise. You know, and clearly, you know, the amount of work I've put into my videos has not translated into views. I started making videos consistently probably about a year ago and I haven't seen any huge growth or success or anything like that. And if I let my ego still dictate the way I live my life, I'd probably be disappointed by that but I'm not, and Stoic philosophy warns about the dangers of that kind of thinking. You know, because again, I don't deserve anything. Hard work is not always rewarded. Hard work sometimes is just hard work. There's a level of randomness to every external factor. 
my videos happen to show up in a few people's feeds or their recommended next videos and a few people happen to decide to stick around and watch them. It's not about my hard work, at least it's not only about my hard work. I don't deserve anything. And when I realized that my ego started to dissolve, it was no longer about making it big or getting a certain number of views or subscribers. You know, it was just about dedicating myself to this craft. Because, you know, ego is what's tied to views, to metrics, to financial numbers. And, but that's not what I felt when I was 10 and started creating videos in my bedroom just for the joy of creating. That's not what I felt when I felt like I need, wanted and needed to make videos and pursue storytelling in this way, even when I felt insecure or, you know, like I couldn't meet my own standards. It's just on some deep level, I'm drawn to this craft. That's all. And each video I make, each script I write, each story I cut and edit together is just another step in building on that craft. It's a way to improve slightly each day, to feed that inner sense of satisfaction that comes when I take an idea from my brain and put it onto a screen. It's the unique joy I get from taking a story and being able to put it into video form and then watch that story being told on screen. And those are all things I'd feel whether another set of eyes ever watched one of my videos or not. And that's ultimately the purpose of creating. So, you know, of course, I'm not saying you should throw out goals completely. Metrics, money, analytics, those are all helpful guideposts to have as you kind of think about where you wanna go, as you build a plan for how you're going to pursue this craft. But those should all be secondary to purpose. You know, your purpose should be the thing that whether or not anyone would ever see it, anyone would ever pay you for it, that's the thing you'd still do. It should be the thing that drives you, that gives you that inner sense of satisfaction when you just dedicate yourself to that craft every day. And it's funny to watch what happens when you let go of ego, because when you let go of expectations about you know where you should be or how should people should be interacting with whatever craft it is you do, you start to reach those metrics faster a lot of the time. You know when they're no longer so important to you, and when just dedicating yourself and bettering yourself to the craft is what you spend most of your time doing, you get better at the craft faster. You know, less of your energy is spent worrying about how to get better views or better followers or more money, and more of your time is spent just improving. And so you improve a lot faster. But of course, ironically, you no longer care about those initial metrics. Once those are no longer the thing you value above all else, once just, you know, getting better day after day, improving yourself day after day is the only thing that matters, you no longer care about those older metrics. And that's the beauty of it, because you can improve yourself day after day. That's a goal you can actually meet. You know, whether or not the external world decides to give you the you know, recognition that you deserve, you can improve yourself day after day. And if that's your main goal, if you take ego out of the picture and just try to be a little better at your craft every day, you'll find a deep sense of satisfaction. Of course, you might disagree with me, and I can't say that I'm right or that you're wrong. You know, it would be egotistical of me to assume that I've got the answers at 24. But these are some of the things I've been thinking about recently as I've been pursuing Stoic philosophy, and there's something that works for me right now. So all I can do is tell my story and tell what I've learned. And it's up to you if you want to follow along on that journey or not. Thanks for watching.